Hey everybody, welcome back to a new NetTouch web development quick tip. My name is Jeffrey Way, and today we're going to be taking a look at the popular Zen coding tool, and then we're going to find something that's even better than Zen coding. So, if you're not familiar with what Zen coding is, it's really cool. Let's take a quick 30 second overview first. Uh, so, Let's say I want to create a div with an ID of container. Uh, rather than doing it manually, something like that, you know, that takes a good bit of time. Uh, what I can do is type div and then use the CSS syntax. So this is Zen coding. So I can hit pound container and it'll create that for me as soon as I hit the expand key, uh, which is control E on my computer. But it's different from program to program. So you can do some cool things here. Like if I want to type, uh, create a div with an ID of container and a class of grid 10 and then this will have a child notice that I use this to create a child of an ordered, unordered list the UL will have uh, four list items and each list item will have an anchor tag as a child so now when I expand to that check it out it creates all of that markup for us really really cool right uh, there's a couple issues though I have with sin coding the first one is you see here how it moves the cursor to the ref, so I can type home.html. But to the best of my knowledge, there's no way to, uh, for instance, hit the tab key and immediately move to the value. So I can type that. And then I could hit tab again to go to the next one. So that's not really useful because I then have to manually do it. Uh, the next one is that, uh, as I understand it, sin coding is kind of a cascading nature. So for instance, if I want to create a UL, I have to do it for... A, but then after that, I've cascaded down to the child anchor tag. There's no way to say, okay, after the UL, then create a div with an ID of content or something like that. See, it doesn't work that way. So that's a big gripe that I have, two big gripes that I have. Luckily, I found a tool that makes it even better. So I'm going to quit out. And this is, tool is called SparkUp. So uh, right now, I think it's available for TextMate and for Vim, which I use. And it looks like there are some other uses here. So if you want to leave a comment on this page, we can work together to see how to get it working on your uh, specific program, whether it's Espresso or eText Editor or an IDE. Anyhow, so let's go. This computer I'm using right now does not have SparkUp installed. So we're going to do this from scratch. So I'll download the zip file right here. Okay, and close that out. Now, we can either install this via the command line, or for a lot of people who aren't comfortable with the command line, we'll do it manually. So I'm going to be using Vim here, but you can see there's instructions for generic and text to me. So if we take a look at the readme, we can see, okay, copy the contents of FT plugin to your .vim slash FT plugin folder. And that's it. So let's do it manually here. And you can see FT plugin. I just need to grab... And let's bring this up again. I just need to drag everything within here into this folder. And you can see the HTML contains my sparkup.vim file and the Python file. Okay. The only other thing I want to do here is I've been using Zen coding for a while, but I don't need that anymore. So let's go ahead and get rid of my Zen coding plugin. And that's stored right here. Now that's gone. So let's test it out and see what this allows us to do now. If I bring it back into MacVim, and let's start over. Now we can do some really cool things. The first thing, and this is one I didn't mention before, but I love it, is uh, before when you would create something like a div with an ID of container, it would have been nice if there was an easy way to assign a value to that tag or um, enter HTML to that tag, and there really wasn't. But with SparkUp, you can. So now, contents, I can use curly braces, and this is my contents. And the spacing is just for readability. So now when I expand to that, you see what it does there, and it does it for me. Really cool. So now we can do cool things uh, in addition to that, like going back up the tree. So remember before I told you if you did this, you cascaded down to the anchor tag, but then you were stuck, and you had to create a new... Um, a new selector, so to speak. But now, using the opposite, you can go right back up. So I can go go back up to the list item, go back up to the unordered list, and next, I'm going to use plus, and this is a sibling. So now I can say, uh, create a div with an ID of container. And then, um, within it, there will be an aside, and another sibling will be uh, div contents. And then, um, maybe a footer something like that, and if I expand it, now it creates all of that markup for me. So isn't that great? That's uh, much, much more helpful. So you can do things now, like let's say div uh, id equals my id, 
and then I can say um, if we want to be lazy I can do style equals width 200 pixels and then uh, let's give it a text my text goes in here and then I can create another one so I can create nav ul list items times four so now when I expand that what's cool about this is it does everything for me but now I can use with Vim specifically, I can do Control uh, N and Control P to go to the next uh, stop point, so to speak. So I can say Home and then Control N, and it takes me to the next one about portfolio contact. Look how much time that saves me. Uh, so, so it's pretty smart too. So if I do um, again four list items and each one has an anchor tag, even if I don't place um, the href value, something like href. Whoops, excuse me, something like ref. Uh, it knows that an anchor tag will require one, so SparkUp will add that for me. So if I expand it, you can see it's added that, home.html. And then if I do control N, it'll take me to the actual value. And then I can just breeze through these. A lot smarter, isn't it? So if you want to go back to the sites, and I've already gotten rid of it, haven't I? Let's open that back up. You can see they have some instructions here of how you can use it. Let's take a look at some of these. Uh, create an ID of header with a child of UL, with a child of list item, with a paragraph within it, and that's going to be footer. Pretty cool. So if, we, if you want to try that out on ours, just to see how to work with these. So say um, header. Now, if you just use pound and not div, it's implied that you did a div. So that's important to know. Header, and then create an unordered list, a list item, and then uh, what's going up? What's going on here now is we're going back up. So we go to the list item, then we go back up to the UL, and then we create a p tag. And this p tag will have text of footer, and then you can see it does that for you. So uh, if you're using a program that SparkUp works with, I definitely upgrade and then uh, feel free to contribute to it. I, I might do that myself. So it's called SparkUp. Uh, I'll have a link in the tutorial notes and let me know what you think. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Bye.